So it's an inch and a half down, inch and five eighths apart. This is for the motor mount. So I would drill a bolt here, I would drill a bolt hole here, here and here to mount the engine on the bottom of this. This, this is where the engine goes. Then I would have a big pulley here, a big a smaller pulley here mounted to the engine and a belt to run this. So that's the prop shaft. It's actually, let's see how long it is. The tubing is 28 inches long. It's 1 16th of an inch thick and it's an inch and a half tubing. So the outer diameter is inch and a half, 1 16th on the inside and 28 inches long. You could shorten that, lengthen it, it doesn't matter really. This one, the top one here is eight and a half inches wide. This one's five inches wide down here at the bottom. So that's where the engine's gonna mount. Let me show you how this prop shaft works. Okay, these are high speed bearings, 6003RS. They handle about 15,000 RPMs. This prop should only be spinning at around 9,000. So the bearing goes in place. I'm not going to sink it all the way in right now, but so that way it won't be so hard to get the bearings out. But that's how it would work. Prop would bolt in here on the prop shaft, and then you would have another bolt hole, which I haven't um, drilled yet because I don't have the the sprocket that I'm going to use yet. So I'm going to wait till I get the sprocket before I drill that hole. You could just use, I have a 3 8 or a 5 8 hub here. That's got to be bored out. Since this is 17 millimeters, the prop shaft is actually 17 millimeters. I could have it. This is not a very good, I wouldn't use a, a sprocket like this. If I had one that was about 6 to 7 inches in diameter, I could place this on here and then place that on there. But since that's 17 millimeters, that's 5 eighths, it's not going to fit. I could probably take a five, uh, 17 millimeter drill and drill that out, but I need a better pulley. So I want some sort of high speed pulley or, or timing belt pulley. That would be best. And then I could use this hub. Or 32 inches long, and the bolt hole for the prop to go in is about a half inch from the top here. So you would start drilling about a half inch so that the prop would fit on there in the proper place. But I would wait until you got your prop, place it on there, find your bolt hole and then drill it. So that's a 17 millimeter rod. It's not stainless steel. So stainless steel would be really hard to drill into, but stainless steel would work if you have it. So that's the prop shaft and then to mount this here The square tubing would be good for both of these brackets. This is going to be my engine mount here. That is a 12 inch piece, square, square inch tubing, aluminum square inch tubing. All this is 60, 61 aluminum. So this is going to mount this bad boy to the frame here. So what I would do is place it here, bolt it into place. And that's going to go on top just like that. So that's going to bolt in here and here. That bolts into the frame. And I'll, I'll do this on the video. And then this bolts into the frame here to keep it in one place. I like it being one solid piece because it kind of keeps it in place. And then I would take these pieces here. This is going to mount this here. So that would slide through and mount over here. And these are 3 8 bolts that I'm using here to mount the prop shaft. Also, when bolting this in, this is a piece that bolts it to the frame, kind of holds it in place. When you mount that, you want some sort of shock absorber in here so that as this vibrates or what have you and, and moves, it's got some sort of shock absorber between it and the mount. And you'll see that when I go through and, and put this all together. I'm going to put it together and kind of speed it up, slow it down, so you can see what I'm doing. So that's it. It's all the major pieces. I think I've measured them out for you. Um, anyway, 
anyway, that's all the major pieces on how to put together or how I'm putting together my own powered harness. Again, a little bit longer than a standard powered harness. And the reason for that is I have a glider, another glider that I can't fly. My powered harness is on because I can't get the kill short enough. And so this will save me from having to cut the wires. And I can use this. I'm, my friends can also use this as a trainer so that they can get accustomed to it. The biggest thing that you that I had a problem with, the biggest thing I had a problem with is using brazing rods. I'd never used them before. Try not to get had to try. The biggest thing I had a problem with is the brazing rods. I'd never used a brazing rod. And I had to be real careful not to get this aluminum too hot. Change the properties of aluminum if it gets too hot. So, those are all the major parts. I think I've covered everything. The prop itself. This is an old damaged prop that I had that I had repaired. I used I haven't sanded it out yet, so it still looks a little rough. But it's balanced out, so I'm gonna sand it down some more. I may have to do a little bit more balancing on it. This is a folding prop that I had originally broken but now I've fixed. Tried it out on my other powered harness it worked just fine, so I'm gonna use it for this one. And again, these would all have lock nuts, but right now I didn't have enough with me and when I get ready to fly it I'll replace all these standard nuts with lock nuts. So the engine mount, mount it to the frame. Eventually what I would do is put a pulley here, have my pulley, maybe some sort of 17 millimeter hub. This pulley is too large, I would use around a 7 to 8 inch pulley, maybe a tiny belt pulley, a large one. Engine would mount here with the clutch with teeth on it. So as the clutch started turning, it would turn this pulley, it would turn the prop shaft. Gas tank goes here. Once I get my engine in, then I'll finish it up, fly it, make a video of the final product, and then these two videos can go together.